Welcome again. Today we consider 5.2.3. Describe and explain an indirect method of measuring pollution levels using a biotic index. Biotic indices measure the abundance and diversity of a group of organisms or the indicator species in a particular area. This information is then used to predict pollution levels using known levels of tolerance for the indicator species. Let's consider what that means with reference to a specific example. Lichens. A symbiotic association involving an alga and a fungus. Lichens can be found all around the planet from the Antarctic to the tropics. Some can survive for thousands of years, even in the face of harsh climate changes. But because lichens acquire their moisture directly out of the air, if this air is contaminated with high levels of sulfur dioxide in particular, then it becomes difficult for most lichens to survive. An area that is affected by sulfur dioxide, for example, is very unlikely to have the shrubby or the fructicose lichens. These are particularly sensitive to sulfur dioxide in the air. Air that's a bit more polluted would also have an absence of the leafy or the foliose lichens. And if the air is heavily polluted, not only by sulfur dioxide, but by oxides of nitrogen and other pollutants, then it is possible to find a complete absence of lichens on rocks and on the barks of trees. Consider three cases. Take a look and see if you can see the three indicators, the three varieties of lichens. And then think to yourselves, what does it mean if you can see all three kinds? Which site is likely to have the highest level of sulfur dioxide and which? is the cleanest site. Another well-known biotic index is the Trent Index to measure water quality in streams and rivers that receive sewage discharges. High levels of certain kinds of invertebrates indicate high levels of sewage or high levels of BOD, biochemical oxygen demand. In the next lesson, we will consider the meaning of the term BOD and the use of the Trent Index.